Welcome to the Major League Eventing Ringside Chat Show. I'm Robbie from Major League Eventing, and I'm here to bring you everything you need to know for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Welcome to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Finally, after a years long delay of the world's most anticipated event, arguably with WEG that happened most recently in 2018, the Tokyo Olympics are finally here and MLE is looking to bring you up to date information regarding all what's going on and what's happening uh, and what to expect in the eventing scene for the Tokyo Olympics. So when is all this happening? So over here on the right, I'm going to be bringing up all the times for the Eastern Standard Time for the American viewers. Um, we will have our first two dressage sessions starting on Thursday and Friday, uh, July 29th through July 30th. Then we're going to have our cross-country session, which is going to be on Saturday. And then we're going to have both of our jumping final sessions uh, coming in on Monday. And how the jumping sessions are going to work is that the team medals are going to go right first thing in the morning. Um, at least for us Americans, and then followed by that with the individual medals. Now, how are you going to be able to watch the Olympics? There are many ways to watch it, uh, most notably through, you know, again, if you're in the United States, through the NBC Olympics app, whether it's on TV or on the application. Uh, there's also many popular streaming sites such as uh, Peacock that you can go through. I believe YouTube TV also has the NBC Sports app through that as well. Um, so there's definitely many ways that you can watch it. And if you're in other countries, I'm sure that uh, your major broadcasters are going to be able to stream it for you live, whether it's on TV or through the app. So some interesting storylines to look out for in Tokyo are, can France remain as the gold medal winners as they were in Rio, or will Great Britain continue with their gold medal win in the World Equestrian Games and take it in Tokyo? Will Michael Young retain his Olympic champion status uh, this year with Fisher Chipmunk as opposed to having Labia Testique Sam back in Rio? And can Ireland continue on the recent team success from the World Equestrian Games and bring it for another podium spot here in Tokyo as well? Everything is reset coming into the games, starting on Thursday with the first dressage session. And with this no longer drop score coming on, everything's going to be reset. History is going to be made with this. So for the top teams coming into Tokyo this year, uh, I've narrowed it down to what I think is are the top six the teams with the best shot of coming out with the podium uh, finish in the team medals. So for the United States, we have Boyd Martin, Phil Dutton, and Doug Payne. Great Britain is Oliver Townen, Tom McEwen, and Laura Collette. Germany, as I said before, is the current gold medalist and Michael Young, Sandra Alfarth, and then Julia Kryowski. New Zealand is coming in with Tim Price, Janelle Price, and Jesse Campbell. Australia is showing up with Andrew Hoy, Stuart Tinney, and Shane Rose. And Ireland has Sam Watson, Sarah Ennis, and Cathal Daniels. So why is the three-person team so important? Without the normal drop score of the fourth ranked pair, the teams now have to rely on three solid performances out of all of their pairs, uh, as there is no longer a drop score to rely on. And with this being said, you know, any sort of minor mistake, and especially a major mistake, is really going to drop a team out of contention for the medals. So every single pair is going to have to be very solid throughout. They're going to have to put down amazing dressage scores, go clean cross country, maybe be a, being able to afford some time faults. Um, out on cross country, and then they're definitely going to have to jump clear uh, on the final day. I really expect that there's going to be a lot of shakeup during the cross country phase due to time faults, um, as that's really going to make uh, you know some tight competition a little bit more spread out, and it's really going to be very cutthroat out there. Um, and then I expect you know especially like the final 15 that go in with the jumping is really going to shake up those orders. So my early predictions for the team and individual medals goes as this: I think that for the team medals. Gold is going to be going to Great Britain. Great Britain is boasting a team of what I believe are three of the top 10 horses in the world, um, currently being led by the FBI number one and current most recent Kentucky five star winner uh, in Oliver Town and Balmoral class. I think that Laura Collette's London 52 is a fantastic pair as well. And Tom McEwen and Toledo de Kurtz are a fantastic pair that I really do think are going to really show up for the Tokyo Olympics and really help solidify this team. Coming in with the silver, I do believe that this is going to be Germany. It's hard to argue that Germany is not going to be winning any sort of medal, uh, barring anything crazy absolutely happening. Uh, but I do think that Great Britain just marginally edges them out. They're being currently led by, in my personal opinion, uh, the greatest eventer in the world currently, and Michael Young, uh, and he's bringing Fisher Chipmunk. Um, it was surprising to see that Ingrid Klimka was left off the team, but even without her, uh, 
Sandra and Julia are still fantastic riders riding fantastic horses. You know, I think that they're also bringing another three of what I believe to be the top 10 horses in the world at the moment. So it's going to be very hard for them, uh, in my opinion, to not be walking away with a team medal. For the bronze medal, I really do think that this is going to be where the true competition lies. I believe that any of the other uh, couple teams I laid out, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, any of them can win this, uh, win the bronze medal and bring that home. In my personal opinion, I think that Ireland is going to be bringing it back, continuing off of their success of their silver medal uh, back in the World Equestrian Games. But again, like this could go either way. Um, I do think that Ireland has been slowly improving over the past couple of years and having uh, fantastic outings both individually and as a team. So I definitely think that they're going to be in the medal contention, sitting on the podium, bringing home the bronze. The individual medals are going to be a lot more difficult this year, I think. The level of competition is going to be much greater, in my opinion. There's a lot of fantastic horses, a lot of fantastic riders, and they're all going to be extremely close. In my opinion, I do think that Michael Young and Fisher Chimmunk are going to be your gold medal winners uh, coming out of Tokyo. It's hard to argue against Michael Young for any sort of ind individual medal, just like it is hard to argue for Germany coming out with a team medal. It's Michael Young. He's probably not going to be leading after Dr the dressage phase, but that's not typically where he wins. He typically wins by being in contention after the first phase, and then he just doesn't make any mistakes for the rest of the weekend. For the silver medal, I believe that this is going to go to Laura Collette in London 52. In my opinion, they are going to be our dressage leaders after the first day, but extremely rarely in these type of events do we see that the winner of the entire event is leading on day one. Um, I think that you know, Michael Young just slightly edges her out as the more well-rounded uh, pair uh, coming into this, but I do think that she's still going to end up with an individual medal. Rounding out our podium, I think that this is going to go to Oliver Townen, running Balmoral Class. Like I said, he's the current world number one. He most recently won the 2021 Kentucky uh, CCI Five Star. I would expect to see Oliver be very disappointed if he doesn't leave Tokyo with an individual medal himself. I really do think that he's just going to put in a solid performance all around, and he's going to get the job done and earn himself a medal. As well as giving you up-to-date information on what's going on at the Tokyo Olympics, we want you guys to be involved in this just as much as we are. If you haven't already, download the Eventing Manager app and create your team of four horse and rider uh, combinations within the certain budget that they allow you. And while you're at it, also join the Major League Eventing uh, League by using the code right over here. And join and compete against your other Major League Eventers for bragging rights as well. Uh, you can also check out my team here. And if you think that you can do better than me, definitely join in. It's a lot of fun. It's free to join. And it just kind of gives you another perspective into the event that you can kind of you know, root for other riders that you might not expect to be rooting for. And what you can also do if you don't agree with me or you do agree with me, on who's going to be walking out with the team and the individual medals, leave a comment down below on what you think. Half of the fun of these types of competitions is the constant conversation of, you know, who's going to win? Who do you think is going to be, you know, first, second, third? And with the Olympics, you know, it's a lot different where, you know, you have the three medals as opposed to who's just going to win the event. And if you like this type of show, leave this video a like, comment down below and share this with your other eventing friends. And, you know, let's also get more people involved in the Major League Eventers uh, League and the Eventing Manager app. Like I said, I'm Robbie from Major League Eventing, and thank you for watching the Major League Eventing Ringside Chat, and I'll see you guys next time.